Profitability Ratios Problem 6. Kiwi Inc. provides the following information for 20x8. Net income, $290,000. Market price per share of common stock, $50 per share. Dividends paid, $190,000. Common stock outstanding at January 1st, 20x8, 150,000 shares. Common stock outstanding at December 31st, 20x8, 240,000 shares. The company has no preferred stock outstanding. Calculate the price earnings ratio of common stock. The price earnings ratio of common stock, this is going to be something, this is going to be part of analyzing profitability. Profitability analysis evaluates the ability of a company to generate future earnings. This ability depends on the relationship between the company's operating results and the assets the company has available for use in its operations. Thus, the relationship between the income statement and the balance sheet, there. These relationships are used to evaluate profitability, which is very, very powerful. Now, there are many different ratios in analyzing profitability. There's the ratio of net sales to assets, the rate of earned, sorry, rate earned on total assets. There's the rate earned on total stock or equity, or just stock or equity. Rate earned on common stock or equity, the difference between those two, one has preferred, one doesn't. Then you've got earnings per share, price to earnings ratio, which is what we're focusing on here, just on common stock though. You've got the dividends per share of common stock and the dividend yield. Again, we are looking at the price earnings ratio, the price earnings ratio. Now the price earnings ratio on common stock measures a company's measures a company's future earnings prospects. And the formula for calculating this, we're going to take the market price per share of common stock over the earnings per share of common stock. So the market price per share of common stock of common stock over the earnings per share of common stock, which is another formula, which is another formula. So over the EPS of common stock, over the EPS of common stock. Now the EPS, the earnings per share, which is another formula, we take net income minus preferred dividends. And what do we, that's the numerator. What do we put as a denominator? The denominator is going to be the number of common stock shares outstanding and it's weighted. It's a weighted number. So if you have beginning and ending balance, you weight the, you average the two numbers. So number of common stock shares outstanding and that is a weighted number. If you're just given one amount, just use that. But if you're given a beginning and ending balance, you want to use that, of course. You want to use that. All right. So let's start by doing the ratio within the ratio. So we're going to start by calculating earnings per share. We start by calculating net income. Net income here is $290,000 minus preferred dividends. Now we do have dividends paid of $190,000, but got to pay close attention to the wording. No preferred stock outstanding. Boom. So numerator, 290000 Divide by our denominator, we've got weighted shares because we have common stock outstanding at the beginning and ending of the year, 20x8. 150,000 shares and 240,000. So we're going to have to average those two numbers together. So 150,000 plus 240,000. And we take the average of those two. And we're going to get a numerator of 290,000. Denominator is going to be 195,000. And that gives us an earnings per share of each common stock out there of $1.49. Of $1.49 per share. $1.49 per share. Okay, we've got that calculation. We've just done our earnings per share calculation. Now we can go ahead and we can do this calculation. So the market price per share of common stock, that's going to be, we're told it's $50 per share. That's this number right here. $50 per share market price per share of common stock. So we just take $50. $50. That's the top number. The bottom number is the $149 per share. $1.49. So we divide that and we're going to get 33.56 times. So this is the price earnings ratio of common stock. And again, its purpose is to measure a company's future earnings prospects. Now this number, 33.56 times, doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, good. It really depends on the company and the industry. Different industries like the tech industry, much different than a retailer, much different than telecommunications. They all are just so different when it comes to this, this uh, price 
to earnings ratio of common stock. So just keep that in mind. Again, the price to earnings ratio on common stock measures a company's future earnings prospects.